with a former student who is now becoming a veterinarian, uh, Dr. Danielle Hudak. Um, she started, Danielle started with me as a veterinary student, um, sorry, a Rutgers student, Rutgers. an animal science student, got accepted to Ross University, um, and now you just wrote the, what we call the National Board Exams, which um, allows her to actually be eligible to practice in North America, and um, she's here visiting me doing externship. And so what I asked her to do, and out of the kindness of her heart, she's going to talk to me, um, talk to all of us about her, her story. And I think we're going to talk about, um, there's a lot of talk about not getting into the veterinary profession because of the financial issues involved. And, and I think Danielle's in a prime position to give really honest feedback and, and um, information about where she stands and, and how she's dealing with the situation. So, so Danielle, why don't we just start talking about you as a person and how you got involved? Because no one else in your family is a veterinarian, right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> no one. So, so what? So, did you always want to be a veterinarian? I did actually. Okay. Yep. I come from a family of teachers, so both my parents are teachers. Um, but growing up, when I was in middle school, I just developed this passion for animals, and that kind of stuck with me through high school and into college. And um, my, I guess the time that I truly knew this is what I wanted to do is when I started working for Dr. T, actually, because now you're actually applying what you love to a job. And so um, working for Dr. T definitely opened my eyes and confirmed that this is what I wanted to do, um, being in the veterinary profession. Um, but I am Jersey born and raised, and I went to Rutgers for undergraduate. And so I majored in animal science and uh, with a pre-veterinary concentration. And so I pretty much was on the path to becoming a vet. There was really no other way to go after that. And so when I was at Rutgers, I heard about Ross University from a friend who actually was a year above me and she had just applied and got in. And so um, I started to investigate into what this school in the Caribbean was. And so um, I started to do some online research and found out about the program and I ended up applying, as well as applying to schools in the United States as well. And Ross was the one of the two schools that um, accepted me into their programs. And so I was, uh, the other school that was another one in the Caribbean, St. George's. And so I was kind of weighing um, pros and cons of both of them and which one to go to. And I ended up making the decision to go to Ross University. Um, so for those that don't know, Ross University is in the Caribbean, in the West Indies, in St. Kitts and Nevis. And so this was a total adjustment for me. Being from Jersey, going to Rutgers, home was never more than 20 minutes away. And so I made the decision not only to go out of state, but out of country, about, I think it was 1,700 miles away from home. Um, but I knew that this is what I needed to do in order to pursue a career in veterinary medicine. And I was willing to make those sacrifices that were necessary in order to do that. And so it was definitely an experience living in another country while trying to pursue a career in veterinary medicine. Um, you don't really have too much of the support system, the sense of family and friends that you can see or... Um, have with you so a lot of FaceTiming and text messaging and email was done throughout the years and Ross University is also a school that does trimesters so you go pretty much straight throughout the year which is something that I ended up learning about as I was applying and so we have about two to three weeks of breaks in between each semester so don't have a full winter break or a full summer break but you do have some time to come home for a little bit and then just get right back into the swing of things for the next semester. Um, I think that that actually kind of helped me to stay on track and to stay focused um, even though it was a little bit grueling not gonna lie in order to try and um, push through all the semesters of studying and work but it was I think um, actually better to have that and to be able to just keep going through and not take too much of a break in between semesters. And um, when I was at Rutgers, uh, this is going back a little bit, I 
developed a passion for oncology, actually, when my pet, one of my own pets, was diagnosed with lymphoma, and we took him to North Star, and I, that was eye-opening for me because I had never dealt with it before, and coming from working in a general practice, we don't really talk about too many options with cancer and what to do next, and so I was able to learn about all the different treatment options and just um, different avenues that you could go down, and so that kind of opened my eyes to oncology, and so currently I am finishing up my fourth year of veterinary school, and the way that Ross works is that after you finish your schooling in the Caribbean, you go to an American university to finish your fourth year, which is your clinical year, um, just because Ross doesn't have the facilities down in the Caribbean to accommodate the students. So I matched to NC State University, and I've been doing my fourth year there. And so now I'm in the process of trying to um, figure out the next step and how to pursue this career in oncology. And so um, the next step that I need to take is to do a small animal rotating internship, which I have been in the process of applying to and um, need to go on interviews for those as well. And then with the goal of hopefully getting a residency in oncology after for three years. Okay, well, let's go back to the to the to Ross issue. So Ross is it's a non-accredited university, correct? Is that what it is? Or it is accredited. Oh, so it's accredited, yep. but the program still exists so that you don't you don't get your degree in four years. You have to do you do additional. so. Um, the way that it works is that you actually because you have the trimesters are done earlier. So you do two years and eight months at Ross in St. Kitts, and then you come to America to do your last clinical year. So in total, it's three years and eight months, um, which is actually about like a couple months shorter than what the state students have to do. Um, but ours is straight through, so we actually end up having more semesters. I think ours comes out to a total of 10 semesters, whereas in America you have eight semesters. So, so basically you worked harder. It's kind of like give you, and take. You worked harder <laughs> Faster, than... Faster, but more work. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so now I got a better understanding of that. And so, so you, would, you would say that taking this route is fine because the, the issue with some people was, do I go to a place like Ross or do yes. I... Yes. Yeah, I, had, I would say that overall my experience was a good one. Um, it definitely was tough when the power would go out <laughs> constantly. Um, so you would lose Wi-Fi and lose connection to be able to talk to family and friends and sometimes that unfortunately would last for a day or so and you don't really realize how appreciative you are of <laughs> Wi-Fi and the internet until you don't have it. Um, so that was definitely a little bit of a struggle um, as well as we had a water shortage on the island for a little bit so for about six months when I was there they would shut the water off every night. And you don't realize how much you need water late at night when you're up studying. <laughs> so it definitely, I think that being in St. Kitts prepared me to be able to adjust and adapt to the ever-changing plan of life that <laughs> we are on. Um, you are all but... <laughs> set for an internship, man. Any, anything anyone throws at you, no problem, man. I live without water. I lived without yes. Wi-Fi for a day. We, Throw yeah. anything at me. We had, we had power go off in the middle of surgeries. It was, yeah, it was definitely uh, an experience. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, was, that, that's good because that, that, that can happen here. That can happen here. That's good stuff. And so just to delve a little bit on, so y you needed that. You were in a relationship or still in a relationship still with someone. In a relationship. So, so any quick advice in the last minute or two that you would give to someone in a lot, that's truly a long distance a long relas yep. relationship. So what's your um, advice for things like that? My advice for that is that you need to make sure you have someone who is on the same page as you, first of all, and wants the same things as you because distance certainly is very tough. And we made sure to spend the time and unfortunately, which came with it, the money as well in order to see each other. Um, so we made sure every semester to visit one another, whether he came to the island to visit me or I went home for a couple days just to see him. But it's takes a lot of effort and a lot of time, a lot of FaceTiming. It's worth <laughs> it though, right? Text messaging, but it's definitely worth it. Worth it. Yeah. Definitely worth it.
Okay, we'll take a break right now. That was great, Danielle. We'll take a break and we'll come back. And what we'll do is we'll talk about the financial aspects of veterinary medicine. And Danielle's in a unique position, so we can hear her thoughts.